Hi, I'm Jim Robinson, marketing specialist. Welcome to Grace Point of View. If you've ever bought anything, or have ever worked for a business, or uh, owned a business, you probably know how important marketing is. And if you're currently alive, you probably know how important social media is in our world today. Now, you'll probably hear a lot of firms or agencies tell you that marketing on social media platforms is incredibly important. Is that just corporate mumbo jumbo? Is social media all ads and influencers and viral sensations? Or is there some real meat and value there? What is that value? What's something about social media that can be helpful for your business? Today we have Kasha Johnson, a marketing guru and social media expert, to unfairly throw some of those questions at her. Um, Kasha will hopefully share some tips and tidbits and philosophies with us, but also some cool success stories. Kasha, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your business, what you do, what you know. Okay. So I run a digital agency I have for about eight years, and we now focus mostly on social media strategy, content creation, and training. And before that, I um, you know started off in college and majored in journalism and marketing and graphic design, then went and worked for agencies. And so that was about 20 years ago, so totally aging myself, but now, you know, made a full circle into social media and going headstrong that way. That's an interesting cultural time frame that you've been a part of in your experience in marketing. You've seen this rise of social media in your experience. That's funny you say that because that's very true. Yeah. I mean, I remember when everything was print, you know, now we call it the old school marketing, right? Where everything was direct mail. And then there was some point, and I had a personal aha moment where I was like, you know what? This social media thing is, is going to be big. And this is going to be a new way to spread your message. What are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about social media? You know, I think that any activity is good activity. So they know that they have to be on social. And so they throw a bunch of things out there that may not align with their brand. And they're just doing it to be on social. But at the same time, they're not really speaking to their audience. They're kind of reacting and just putting um, whatever they see other people do, for instance. And so that's not always true. You really want to be strategic about your social media. You really want to figure out who your target audience is, where are they at, what social channel, what are your business goals, for instance, too, and do they align with your social media? Are you trying to sell something to someone, or maybe you're a nonprofit and you want to bring more awareness to that nonprofit and get more funding? Or maybe you're just trying to be an influencer and get more followers. So there's a lot of different types of goals, and not all businesses have the same goal. Absolutely. Yeah, there's got to be a strategy of some kind. I think a lot of us who've been part of social media in some capacity since the beginning of it first starting, yeah, we've probably developed some habits that are more about our instincts or just our, our defaulting to how we use social media that might not have actually been conscious decisions or strategies absolutely absolutely I've got I've got that habit too or had it you know I I love Instagram that's my jam I stay up and I look at my competitors I shop on there and you know it's a great way to tell stories and so I assume that's where my audience would be that's where you know my my prospects would be and that's where I should be selling to everyone and I learned the hard way so I was creating a lot of content and later on I started putting it on LinkedIn and realized that the most engagement I got was on LinkedIn because that's where all the businesses were that's where they all wanted to learn the tips and so I had to pivot my social strategy and that's where you know my my experiences my downfalls you know, became part of the training whenever it came to training on social media, whether that was mid-sized businesses, execs, or whoever, and saying, hey, you know, we actually tried this. This didn't really work very well. And you got to have to put yourself outside of it. So you even yourself has experienced some bad habits or some 
strategies that didn't work out and you had to to teach yourself some some different strategies and retrain yourself sounds like oh all the time all the time and even processes certain ways of creating content and things like that because let's face it that it's social media is great it's a great platform there's you know half the world is on social media right now and we spend at least three hours a day on it so why not take advantage of it and it's a free platform you know there's a lot of channels to choose from but at the same time, it can become really overwhelming really quickly. And a lot of time can be sucked into it, creating a lot of content. So you want to have those processes down. You want to definitely really think about how you're putting your content out there. And, um, you know, I think that will save everybody a lot of time and a lot of frustration. So what happens is people get started. They have great intentions. And then all of a sudden, they get burnt out. It sounds like there's a few downsides too. Like I think many of us have seen or heard or experienced ourselves some scammy types of social media marketing where it almost seems like somebody's trying to trick somebody into buying something. And I think that seems way more common now than it, than it used to be. Uh, what, what do you think about that? What's your philosophy um, with social media marketing? I think you really have to be authentic. I think you have to be yourself and you have to really be vulnerable on social media because at this time, more than any time, people want to do business with people. You know, we always have, we want that human connection. Even though it's digitally, we still want that human connection. And, you know, right now I can go to a social channel, look up your business and really get to know you real quick. You know, 20 years ago, I'd be like, hi, here's my business card. And, you know, you'd give me yours and, you know, I'd take a look at it. Maybe I'd email you. Maybe we'd get on a call. Or maybe I'd go to your LinkedIn. And back then, I don't think LinkedIn was even had a lot of information. Now I can go research you, go to your social channels, and really get to know you real quick. You know, what's going on with you as a business owner? Who are you? What kind of services do you provide behind the scenes? Um, so it's a great opportunity for people to put a lot of great content out there and build that trust. At the end of the day, is it's, it's about trust, authenticity, and the human connection. I really like that. I feel like we've also seen a lot of people or businesses trying to be something or somebody else, putting a front up in, in a way. There's like a little bit of a pressure to do that sometimes with social media or anything really public. I like the approach to be yourself. In a lot of ways, it seems like that should be easier, right? Yeah, it is, but people don't like to be vulnerable all the time, you know, and, and that's been a lesson for me too. I mean, it, that's a tough one to ask people to really share their experiences, really be vulnerable, but that's what makes you different from everybody else is your story, you know, how you started your business, um, you know, maybe there's something behind that or even who you are, what your purpose is, you know, and, and people want to connect with people that way. You were ta you're telling us about an exciting new project that really matters to this whole conversation that you've been working on uh, is a, a social media course. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So I created an online course that helps small and mid-sized businesses create social content. So it's for anyone who wants to create social content and yet can't afford to hire a marketing agency. So maybe you're having to do it yourself, or maybe you have somebody that could use on your team that could use a couple extra hours, but you don't know where to start. And look, there's a lot of information online about social media. This course starts you from beginning to end. So it's a very step-by-step -step process. It's very digestible, and it takes you anywhere from the beginning of like, okay, who is your target audience? What channel are they on? You know, why are you on social media in the first place? To then we go, so we're, so we're building the architecture. So then we go into the branding, the branding of your business, and then branding your social content. And once you get that branding down, it'll be a lot easier and faster to create the content. And then we go into how would you create the content? How would you write your copy? You know, what what is hashtags supposed to look like 
And then, you know, I share some apps on how I, the apps that I love to create content. And then we go into, at the end of the day, you know, scheduling and posting and all. And, you know, I, I, I created this for small businesses. There was a lot of people that saw the work that I'm doing through my digital agency. And they were like, well, I, I want you to, you know, I want to hire you. But they couldn't afford to hire a full agency. And so this is my way to help small businesses from the experiences and the training that we do for the big ones. And just a, a side note here, just because you're a big business and you have big budgets doesn't mean that your social media is gonna go great. And that's a big misconception out there. And trust me, it doesn't most of the time. It really doesn't. Um, so this course is used, these processes are used by big corporations, and small businesses too. And then I selfishly needed something for myself. You know, I run a digital agency. I'm a single mom trying to raise my kids. You know, I do some volunteering for nonprofits where um, we help them support in their social media, teach them how to get started. And so I have a really busy life. For me to stop and post something every single day, it's just not going to happen. I have to run a business and I have to run a household and, you know, I need some personal time to get some sleep, right? So I created this course also from the processes that I made for myself. So that way um, I was able to save time and my sanity and still put my content out there on a consistent basis and be in front of everybody, especially my prospects. That sounds really helpful, especially the bit about taking small businesses who might not even have really begun to take advantage of social media. Uh, I know in my limited perspective too that I've seen a lot of small businesses who've barely even started. Maybe they just have the accounts, but they need to be taken from ground zero to, you know, through the steps to learn how to be skilled in it. Um, but many times that can feel really stressful because it can seem from the outside that everybody else already has it figured out. Everybody's already way ahead in my small business, we haven't even started. And that's like, that's what a stressful experience that is to try to figure out how to go from there, from nothing to something on your own. So it sounds very like- Very daunting. Yeah. Yeah, very daunting. And you don't know where to start and you don't wanna be wasting your time either. Now, here's the thing too, you know, you don't, you, you wanna have a social presence and it's not always about all the followers and the engagement. Sometimes you just need that social presence to build trust. Like I said, you know, nowadays we give each other business cards and, and we move on. And what do I do when I go home? I Google you. I look at your social channels. I look at your website. I look at you digitally and see like, okay, you know, what is this company about? Do I want to do business with them? Will they provide a solution for me? And do they seem like really cool people, right? Yeah, that brings up a really good point. We've already talked, touched on this quite a bit, but why is social media, zooming back out, so we we're talking about the course, but now zooming back out, why is social media so essential for business growth these days? I think it comes back down to just having that human to human connection and just really having a story about your brand. You're telling a story about yourself and social media is the platform to do so. And it also allows you to be a thought leader in your industry. You know, maybe you're a real estate agent and you service, you know, um, uh, mid-size to, to large homes, you know, and people are relocating. And maybe you want to make connections with people that say, hey, you know, I'm really great at this because I know the location. I've been doing this for so many years. It's about finding you know, a home for your family, not a house. I know relocations are really tough and I will take care of you all the way. And oh, by the way, here's some testimonials and here are some customer reviews and stories that I can share. And there's no other place really to do so, you know, unless you meet that person in person. But to get a call with somebody or meet them in person, you're fighting for a lot of their time because everybody's busy these days. This, so this allows people to go and find out about you on their time and allows them to really see the authentic you. Do you have success stories of businesses you've seen or helped 
that have experienced that kind of growth from social media? I do. I do. You know, we have some nonprofits that um, work with women that have just catapulted and they've used the processes from the course. And now they've secured funding just their second year in. They secured funding, but also they secured um, products from a huge brand that we all know on a daily basis. And then I have another um, a, a, a student of mine. Um, her name is Jody. She's a real estate agent, but she also does vacation home rentals. And she does them in all areas, anywhere from Hawaii. She's got a great job, by the way. She's got access to all these beautiful homes, um, homes in Texas, homes in, in Sedona. And so she was building out um, her social channels were servicing all these locations. And she was getting a little bit of increase here and there, but it really wasn't the traction that she was wanting to get. So what she did is she broke it down into each location. So for instance, she has I Love Sedona. And then she really thought about who her target market is and what kind of content they would want to see. I Love Sedona is a specific like, yeah, it's, social media account? Yes, it is. It's okay. on Facebook, Got which it. now has over 100,000 followers. And the content she started creating was very specific per location. So, for instance, she would do events, local restaurants, hiking trails. So now me going to Sedona and renting a house there seemed a lot more appealing. Plus, I have this list of activities that I can do. And, I mean, she grew. She grew huge. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it that's, is. That's an amazing story. Have, have you seen this kind of growth in your own, like putting your – your practices and stuff you've been teaching in your course, how have you seen that affect your own business and social media? Oh, it, it affected it a lot. But let me step back and tell you that, like, even though I do social media, I really, for myself, was really hesitant at first. Because, again, it takes a lot of time. And that's where I had to create that process. And once I started creating that, it, it was a game changer. Because now, not only was I top of mind you know, for my prospects and my clients. It also solidified that the work that I'm doing is, is great. They got to hear from me all the time or see me. So there's this thing where I think if people see you or, or hear something 12 to 15 times, it finally solidifies in their brain. Well, I was showing up in their feed or I am showing up in their feed all the time. And so I started hearing back from a lot of top execs. So we work with a telecom company here that's huge. And the top, top execs were like, hey, great to see you on here. Thank you for the advice. Thanks for the tips. Thanks for the inspiration. And I was like, whoa, like, I didn't even know that those people knew who I was. And number two, like, these are the people I really want to be talking to. It was it was really like exciting, and at the same time, I was like, "Wow, I'm proving myself that this really works," you know. So it was that like aha moment. And then just recently too, I have a bid out for, um, gosh, it's it's a six figure bid that really wanting to get with a certain company, and um, they're amazing and they're great. And they said, you know, one of the people that I'm speaking to. He said, hey, I've been seeing you on LinkedIn. I've been, you know, noticing all the work that you're doing. Keep up the good work. We'll talk in about in a couple weeks. And I was like, ooh, this is a prospect. So now social media is working for me. Now, you know, I'm having these conversations with people that usually wouldn't notice me, and they're coming to me. It feels good. It kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Yeah. You could be on social media just as much as somebody else can. Yeah. And it's interesting to hear that, you had some difficulty practicing what you preach as well. It's hard for all of us. Oh, yeah. The but, habits. Yeah. It's the habits. But you started seeing some clear benefit too lately. Yes. That's awesome. And now I'm like, why didn't I do this earlier, right? And this isn't only for people, and I'm, I'm talking social media in general. There's a lot of people that have started side hustles. Maybe they have a full-time job. But they have this dream of creating a jewelry company or maybe doing a nonprofit. And the social media, 
is a great way to get your message out there, start a business out there. These days, you don't have to have a brick and mortar. I mean, we live in some really awesome times in the sense of it's a lot easier to start a business these days. And social media has allowed that. And you can start a side hustle these days. And you can, you know, you don't have to put as much effort in as you usually would back, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And you're still legit. Yeah, things are really changing. Yeah. it's a good point. So you've talked about a couple of the elements in your course. Um, what are some of the, I guess, main steps that you take businesses through uh, as they're learning through the course? You know, we talked about knowing who your target audience is, making sure your goals are aligned, and then really learning how to use um, copy, like the tone and the voice, how are you gonna speak to your audience? But then we take it a step further and we teach you how to schedule all of your content and how to create it in bulk. So that way, you're creating it all at once. And there's certain ways to do that that I talk a little bit more about my course, anywhere from the creative assets to the copy, and then scheduling it, creating a content calendar, having specific content types. So that way you know what content you're going to be creating every single week. So maybe on Monday, I'm sharing a tip. Then maybe on Tuesday, I'm inspiring. Then maybe on you know Wednesday, I'm talking about behind the scenes of my business. So there are ways to outline your social content. So that way, it's already organized. It's put out there in a way that you're not being reactive. Because at the end of the day, we all have to work on our business you know, servicing our clients and then working on our business too. And if you're slowing down in your business, if times sometimes get hard, you know, or the economy is not where it's supposed to be, that's really a good time to pivot and look inward and start creating some content about your business to really leverage social media now. It's a great point. It's a great point. And it's cool to see how I think taking people from zero all the way through these steps is not, it's obviously gonna be helpful for social media, but it sounds like it's just helpful business steps in general for doing your marketing. And social media is obviously the main part for that right now. Yeah, but so. we do go into branding and yeah. we do go into business goals and there's templates that you can download, worksheets, there's, um, you know, calendars and things like that that are also provided in the course. And there's also a Facebook group that you can go in and you can ask me a question so that way you're not all alone. That if something does come up, you know, I'm here to support. Yeah, I really like how helpful that sounds. There's a lot of, I've seen some of what you're talking about where there's a few tips out there on social media that, that talk about, hey, you can do this and get more, you know, more followers or whatever. And it kind of seems like get, get famous quick schemes kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Get a lot of followers quick schemes. Yeah. To me, this sounds like it's really helpful building blocks for, for everyday businesses, and I really like how that sounds. Yeah. So people who are in the situation where they need to learn how to get started on their social media or they're experiencing some downturn in their business or whatever, uh, where can those people go to get some more information about your course? So you can go to socialcontentcreationmadeeasy.com and we'll have information there on the course. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Miss MS Kasha Johnson, K-A-S-I-A Johnson, and on Facebook, and then you can find me on LinkedIn, and you can find me on Twitter. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Kasha, thanks so much for being here with us today, and thank you for watching. Um, check out Kasha's content on social media and on her website. And um, I'm Jam Robinson. This has been Grace Point of View.